This is John Snow. He's bringing you an enthalpy and rate assessment answer key. Remember, we're dealing with values for which we should know the symbols and the units. And when we know the symbols and the units, it's easier to figure out which equation to use. In the first question, you're being told that you have some gold. You know there's a temperature change. You know it's specific heat capacity. Each substance has one. It's a lookup value. And you're being asked, given this number of joules of heat, well, how much was the sample in terms of its mass? So you know you're using Q equals MC delta T, but you need to isolate for mass. So you divide both sides of the equation by C delta T in order to have your mass isolated to one side of the equivalency. Once you do that, you simply plug in the values with units. I know it takes up more space, but if you use units consistently, it's a nice way to double check that you've plugged your values into your calculator correctly. It's called the factor label method or in university the dimensional analysis method and it will help you to make sure that you're getting what you need. Here I'm getting grams and that's good because mass can be reported out in grams. Being mindful of significant figures, each value in the question has three, so you must take your answer down to three significant figures. Do this at the end. Do not round before your final calculation to avoid rounding error. Question two involves calorimetry, like we did for the lab. And so you are determining the amount of enthalpy generated by the dissolution of calcium carbonate in a certain amount of water by measuring the temperature change in the system based on the heat capacity value of the water. So you have again a few values to look up in this case. Heat capacity of water of course is one of the values you need to make sure you're using here. 4.186 joules per gram degree Celsius. And you need to isolate for delta H in order to determine the enthalpy of the reaction. That's what delta H sub R means. So in this case the enthalpy of dissolution or ionization. In this case, it's relatively simple. If you're dividing both sides by n, it means you're taking n over to the other side and divide, dividing by it. Here I'm showing you the hard way to calculate the molar mass of something. One calcium, one carbon, three oxygens, multiplied out by their subscripts. Of course, if you have access to a search engine, you can search it up, as you say. But on the off chance you don't, you get these values from the periodic table and do the math. So I'm dividing the mass of the solute, calcium carbonate, by the molar mass of calcium carbonate to determine the moles of calcium carbonate. And that goes on the denominator mass of water, specific heat capacity of water, the temperature change you measured for the water divided by the moles of the solute put into the water that changed temperature. You're going to get a ridiculously large value
28,740 joules per mole. Joules is left, moles is left. Of course, you can divide that by 1,000 in order to determine kilojoules per mole, giving you the ability to honor your significant figures. 28.7 kilojoules per mole. Now we are talking about total enthalpy versus molar enthalpy. You are given a value based on one mole of something and then you're being told, but here's actually how much there was. These questions will sometimes flip the reaction so that you have to be mindful of the sign, but this question does not do that. So we're talking about taking that value in kilojoules per mole and then multiplying it by two moles of C2H2. That's probably ethyne, triple bonded organic compound. This is probably the most work I've ever put into a question like this, just to make it clear what's really going on. You can see that when we multiply those together, the moles will cancel. So instead of molar enthalpy, it's just plain old enthalpy. And there's four significant figures given, so you can just box that four-digit thing up. Remember Hess's law is where we take a series of reactions that appear to add up into one final reaction. And we have to be mindful of where things are placed. If it's a reactant, it needs to be on the left. So that means you have to flip the top, question, the top equation in order to make sure that you get carbon monoxide as a reactant. The delta H value sign changes to plus 221.0 kilojoules. As evidence of the fact that these continue to be hard and make you think and develop problem solving, I thought I was good to go here. So I started writing them all out again. Thinking only one had to be manipulated. And then you would just sum those up, mind, minding the signs, except I can't cancel two carbons and a carbon, so I need to multiply that second equation by two in order to get rid of carbon, because there is no carbon in the tar target equation. So if I multiply that by two, I multiply the enthalpy value by two. Now, I've got carbons on the reactants, carbons on the products, they cancel. Carbon monoxide is one of them, hydrogen gas, one of them. Oxygen gas, I've got a couple of different ones here, but the one and ones cancel, leaving me with two. And then carbon dioxide and water. So I add those all up. And I get 1,049.6 kilojoules. But when I write them all out, I see I've got two moles of absolutely everything. 
And when you have two moles of absolutely everything, you need to divide by two, which means you need to divide the summed enthalpy by two. Forgot my O on H2O. And so, according to Hess's law, these three stepwise reactions and their enthalpies give us a total enthalpy of 524.8 kilojoules. Remember sigma iMovie doesn't give me a lot of options for superscripts and subscripts. Remember that when you have a degree sign superscript, it's standard ambient temperature and pressure. And if you have a subscript F, that means formation. So you need your lookup table, and you know there's one on Wikipedia. On a test, you'd have to be supplied with one that you could refer to. Here I've made myself a small one. Keep in mind, too, that phases are relevant here. I had forgotten them in the question. Whatever you decided to put in in order to make your life work out for you is whatever I'll accept. But I chose to make all of them gas, but the alcohol. What alcohol is that? C2, ethanol. Again, superscript M, superscript N. If you look at the handwritten version, it's better. If you have only one reactant or one product you're dealing with, you don't need X and Y, you only need X. In this case, it's H2O2. We're looking at how the reaction proceeds based on the concentration of H2O2. And we notice that when the concentration is double, the rate doubles. When the concentration is tripled, the rate triples. Finally, this looks terrible, but it looks good in handwriting, so pause the video and check it out. The mass at time whatever final is equal to the mass at time zero times a half to the power of how much time happened divided by the half lifetime. So you're taking your 45 grams that's the final and dividing it by half held to the power of the full time divided by the half lifetime to find out how much you started with 72,126 turn it into kilograms